started in 1990. 8,000 trees, I don't know. 20 acres started out. And they didn't do very good, so we started over and did it again. <laughs> Second time we planted honey crisp, that's this one. When you get a good railing, you guys can eat it. It's, it's tremendously good. My dad started all this at Harvey Farming. In 1975, we moved to Florida, bought 20 trees for a hobby. Had a mutation in 80, no, wasn't it? 83, maybe. So, Gala used to be a yellow apple, it turned redder. The county agent happened to be from the apple growing region. He said, Boy, y'all got something there, you better go for it. So, we did. Took about five years, we filed a patent on it. And from 1987 till, uh, let's see, 2004 or something, we collected royalties on it, and that's pretty much how we got established. Everywhere they grow apples in the United States, I've pretty much been there, and I look and I see. Most of the apples are grown either up on a mountain, next to the lakes, or next to a major river. Because the cold air will kill your bloom. If you're next to a river, warm air is always coming off the water, always coming off. So for a 10 mile radius to run the river, maybe 20 miles according to contour yeah, land, you get the warm air and you don't have no frost. Up here you still get some frost, but cold air tends to go down. But up here the trees just don't grow like they do in the valley. In the valley, you fight to keep them not growing up here. You gotta prune them hard and fertilize them to keep them growing. Because mm. the climate's so much different. When I started growing honey crisp, all the growers said, "Man, you locos, and you can't grow apples and honey crisp in Kentucky because you just can't grow them because the climate's just not right." And everybody knows what kind of climate it takes. And I said, "Well, yeah, but I'm different from you guys. I mean, you ain't that much different, you know." But it took a while, and they finally some of them came to see. Me. We used to have 300 varieties, so any kind of an apple somewhere along the line, we've tried it. We got three other sites. Go over two ridges and go down, that's where I live, called Cloverlick. Got a couple acres of gala, actually three acres of gala. They do great there. And up at the other side, I pushed out the galas because they didn't do as good as the ones up here. So we got four varieties at the apple shop, three varieties at my home site, and then probably pretty much two up here now. All apples are hand-picked. Like I said, these here are not only hand-picked. We'll watch up there and you guys can watch them. You got a pair of little wire cutters. You got cloth gloves. And you grab that baby. Ah, if they squeeze them, I jump on them every time. <laughs> Pick it up, cut the clipper, lay it in the bag. How many tons of apples do you produce this year? The tons, we do about, the honey crisp, we do anywhere from two to 3,000. I don't know if you can add that up. But wow. they pay good money for them. It ain't how many apples you grow, it's what they look like and how much you get for them. Yeah, yeah we've been doing Food City for six years, I think. That's great. Yeah, if you look in the store, you see them. But number one apples, they pay from 45 to $60 a bushel. Wow. The apple tree's like a, a bank. It's got a lot of money down there. If you draw all of it out at one time, then the next year you ain't gonna be a no more money out, you know what I'm saying? That's what happens. <laughs> if you draw like too much out from the root like system, like the it. same year that it's setting a crop, it's making a crop for next year. See, Kentucky is not an apple growing region. You can't expect the guys at the, down there to know what the guy in Washington knows because, you know, they got such a, they put more money in them, more training, you know. Mm -hmm. they're, these guys are corn and tobacco and whatever. Mm -hmm. That's one of the goals uh, with Extension is also maybe to encourage somebody who's interested or, or uh, yeah. whether it be whatever ag, uh, you know, venture they might want to go into uh, by holding workshops or, or, you know, just helping them one-on-one. So uh, that, that tends to be, you know, something that we actually do. So, uh, and then also, uh, maybe help them along the way if they you know they've come to a workshop they've learned how to grow apples or blueberries or what have you they can come to our office and say well we're having a problem can you tell me what it is and usually if we can't diagnose it you know right off the bat we can actually go and uh and send, maybe send a sample off to uk to find out what's going on so i think we're getting into an economy now to where most people are having to to actually uh plant gardens uh orchards uh and that sort of thing mm -hmm. I was a coal miner, worked in a little coal mine, shot it with dynamite and loaded with a shovel when I was 18. Last mines I worked in, people wouldn't believe it. This coal was 24 inches. That's about. Yeah. Yeah. You couldn't take a drink of water. You had to get off the scoop and lay on your side and try to get a little bit out of it. I worked there for six months and that was my last coal miner. You never know where you're at, you just guess. It's tough.
I did that for 10 years. In 86, 87, I started. Started uh, growing apples. So it's a little bit of improvement. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>